Have you ever opened a sketchbook and had no clue on what to draw? Or did your spread just turn into shit like moldy cream cheese on your toasted everything bagel on a hot Tuesday morning? Well, I have a solution for y'all. In all seriousness, welcome to another video. Today I'll be talking about the multiple ways you can fill up your sketchbook. Disclaimer, sketchbooks are made to be pretty anyways, so you can't get butt hurt if it looks bad. There is always the next page that you can try again on, or post-its is another option. I will be referring to these methods in the forms of bagels because I wrote this script on my morning commute and I was very hungry. The first equation I like to teach y'all is the good old plain Jane, the plain bagel. She's a classic. Everyone loves her. I surely do. I've been using this one as long as I can remember. Pretty much just committing to one color. Now, keep in mind I only use non-erasable materials, so if you're using a pencil, I mean, that works too. There ain't no shame in that. My favorite is the Ty 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 Cos Ty Condura Ty Ty Cinder <laughs> Mike Tyson pencil. Ty Condura pencil? Like I don't really remember if that's how you say it or if that's what it's even called. But anyways, I'm staring out of this conversation. You'll you'll just want to stay consistent with the pen, pencil, whatever you have it throughout the spread. What I really like about this one is that you're not obligated to figure out what to color. It's just a matter of filling in the lines with them chicken scratches and basically just focusing on the line art and the variances you can create with your pen. Now with the plain bagel, you could use a variance of pen sizes, still the same color, but you tend to notice that it won't be consistent with your other line work. So usually I like to stick with one size or I keep the same variancy throughout each sketch as I did with this one Keshi spread. The next bagel that we have in the shop is the cinnamon raisin. Now personally, I hate cinnamon raisin. Not the sketch spread, but the actual bagel. Though the spread itself is pretty clever. This method is very convenient for when you fucked up on a sketch and there's no undo button, which in my case, there never is. I have no magic eraser for my pen. You pretty much just slap a post-it note on top of it and call it a day. Now, don't just walk away yet, buddy. We're not done here. You're not done. You gotta draw on the post-it to make it look presentable. And if you fuck up again, well, shit, slap another one on there. What I really like about this is that you can slap any color post-it and accent it with the choice of pen you are using. You're using black? Lit. Slap any color you want. Using a blue? Great. Slap a blue post-it, or you could do a complementary color and use orange. I know, using color theory. These six years of art school finally came into use. Do your little doodly doos and doodle the rest away. Now the next one you're going to want to sit down for. We got the blueberry bagel in line. This one is a favorite of mine, both spread and bagel. So essentially it is a plain bagel, but with a splash of color. We ain't getting serious with the colors, but just one color or a set of monochromatic colors, which is primarily just the same color in different tones and values. Now, because I use a sketchbook that I simp for, I am a simp for this sketchbook. I swear to God, this is the second time I'm using the sketchbook and, or this is the second sketchbook I have of it. And it is the Crescent Render No Show Through Flat Sketchbook. Maybe I'll write it down in the description if I remember, but I swear to God, if someone comments, what sketchbook are you using? I, I will fight you. I won't, but. I'm not gonna answer that because I, I literally just said it. So because of the sketchbook, I'm not afraid to use markers since it doesn't bleed through the page. 
but you are free to use whichever medium you like. Because the sketchbook doesn't handle wet mediums well, I only use pens and markers with the occasional colored pencils. Though in other cases in which I used a mixed media sketchbook, I'll use gouache or ink. I will use this method in accents of color to make the spread pop and seem more cohesive. You can color parts of the subject using the color for shading, a piece of clothing, hair, skin, or whatever else you can think of. Now, don't go crazy with this one. You don't want to completely color it because we're saving that for the next one. I call this attack the spreaded butter bagel. You can put this one into any type of bagel you'd like and spread it evenly to the page. Man, I I really got hungry at this point of the script. To be honest, I'm, I'm getting hungry now. I haven't eaten in like five hours. Now, if you want to get fancy with this one, you can also fill in your whole subject with the color all while keeping the background clear. This will really make an effortless look to the bagel. I mean spread. For our next one, we have the spreaded cream cheese bagel. Similar to that of the buttered, we are adding the color to the background as opposed to the object. Therefore, we will be leaving the object clear of the color. Once again, this is just an accent, a little pizzazz to the bagel. You can really make that line art pop with this one. Now for the finale, the one you've all been waiting for, the everything bagel. Quite a popular one, I must say, because essentially it is everything that you've learned in this video into one. You are able to create variants of styles on a spread, all while filling up your sketchbook and making it look pretty. And if you don't want to do that, then do one of each bagel. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You know why? Because this is your sketchbook. You have the power to draw in whichever way you'd like. Sometimes people tend to overthink of how they want to lay out their sketches, and sometimes less is more. Don't get distracted by what you're seeing on social media because those artists you look up to probably took a long time to get that done and also has had much experience doing so. Just have fun creating and draw freely. You should focus more on the studies of the sketches rather than the prettiness of it. Having a sketchbook, and this is solely in my opinion, so don't at me, is to jot down your ideas aka thumbnails for projects and well, sketches, studying, anatomy, trees, I don't know, while also being a source of where to practice your ideas. If you begin to focus on the aesthetic, you won't grasp the concept of what you've learned. It's like when you make your notes all pretty for class, but then you realize that you have learned nothing from it while jotting it down. But I will say it will invoke you to study more because it's all organized and pretty. Which, I mean, eventually you will get to that point in which you can look back at your studies of anatomy, clothing, trees, your fucking dog, I don't know. And hopefully you will get the further motivation from yourself rather than from others to continue creating beautiful work. I surely enjoy looking back at my old sketchbooks and stuff and seeing how much I've grown as an artist. And I wouldn't say that I've perfected anything. I have a long way to go and I'll never stop learning. Even at the age of like 60, I'll, I'll, I'll still be going ham. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been enjoying making these little monologues for y'all. I just want y'all to create and never stop creating. Be sure to give this video a like and maybe subscribe. Or not. And let me know down in the comments what type of bagel you would like to try. Or any other type of bagels you've discovered. And I'm not talking about the actual food. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. I I can't believe I made a video using bagels as an analogy.